China is a nation that until recently did not appear in the space race. This was a fatal mistake, and actually, it's also completely incomprehensible why NASA and SpaceX underestimated the power of Chinese space travelers. After all, China has equally powerful rockets and even its own space station. Next, the Middle Kingdom will conquer the moon, and Michio Kaku warns that the US must keep its eye on the ball if it wants to secure a piece of the moon. The popular US explorer and space maven has just revealed China's shocking discovery on the moon that will change everything. China's Lunar Base Many wonder why the Chinese have suddenly emerged with such a presence in space. Hardly anyone in the West knew until now that China has built its own space station that can rival the ISS in size and sophistication any day. Nor were people aware that China builds better rockets than NASA and is technologically close to SpaceX rockets, which shine primarily for their reusability. It almost seems as if China has secretly and quietly molted to this place to now show all the world what the nation is made of, and above all, what it intends to do with space. The country's ambitions go far beyond national prestige. China's researchers know what treasures the moon holds, and it almost seems as if the country's scientists had the right intuition when they put their full faith in the moon instead of pouring billions into Mars exploration. China has made discoveries on the moon that will change your view of space forever, and Michio Kaku only recently leaked the full extent of these shocking discoveries. The latest discoveries are just the beginning, and as early as 2028, China plans to establish its first manned lunar base. This would put the country on the moon well ahead of NASA and SpaceX, and could give it a decisive advantage. To fully develop the moon, Chinese engineers and scientists are building on optimizing nuclear energy for reliable propulsion and continuing to develop space capsules, vehicles, and robots. Landers, orbiters, and rovers, as well as the first 3D printer, are expected to land on the moon soon. As part of the Chang'e 6, 7, and 8 missions, which will be launched in the coming years, Chinese astronauts will most likely be the first humans ever to build infrastructure on the moon. Chang'e 6 is expected to return up to 2 kilograms of lunar material in 2026 and address the question of other available resources on the moon. At the same time, a new lunar relay satellite will launch to provide seamless communications with missions to the moon's south pole. Immediately following Chang'e 6 will be the Chang'e 7 mission, which will be present with an orbiter, a lander, a rover, and a mini-flight detector. The goals are to explore the lunar topography, take more rock samples, and explore the lunar environment. In 2028, Chang'e 8 will bring resource utilization technology to the field and create the first 3D printed components for the future lunar base. Then, everything will be ready for astronauts to permanently reside on the moon starting in 2030. China is allocating billions of dollars to space travel, and this mega investment could more than pay off in the future, because things have been found on the moon that no one thought were possible. Water on the moon. You probably still have the idea in your head that the moon is a rather dry, gray, and boring place. But what if we told you that there are millions of tons of water on the moon? The moon's abundance of water was truly not apparent at first glance. It wasn't until the Chang'e 5 rover discovered how much water is really found on the Earth's satellite. Chang'e 5 took some samples in the lunar region called Oceanus Procellarum, or Ocean of Storms, and sent them back to Earth. Once back in China, scientists from the Beijing Astronomical Faculty analyzed the samples and found something incredible. There were a great many tiny glass beads in about a handful of lunar dust. And each one of these beads had a tiny amount of water trapped in the glass. These beads were probably formed in the course of large impact events, such as the impacts of meteorites and asteroids. The tremendous temperatures turned the lunar dust into glass, a phenomenon we also know from impact craters on Earth. Since the moon has been exposed to many impacts, scientists suspect that these glass beads are found everywhere on the moon, from the equator to the poles. The water in the glass is probably a direct result of solar radiation. Scientists believe that positively charged hydrogen atoms from solar winds enter the glass beads and combine with oxygen. When the sun heats these beads, 
they give up some of their hydrogen. Strictly speaking, there could be about 2,000 kilograms of water in each ton of lunar dust. And even more amazing is that this water can be extracted from the beads simply by heating them. In total, the glass beads are said to hold a water reservoir totaling 270 billion tons. In 2010, NASA estimated that the craters at the moon's north pole contain about 600 million tons of ice. So, the water resources on the moon are vast. Although they can never occur as free-flowing water as they do here on Earth because of the temperatures and the lack of atmosphere. Artificial lunar lakes and rivers are unthinkable, but the vast reservoir of water could provide a source of life for astronauts and future lunar settlers. Water not only serves astronauts as drinking water or to irrigate lunar greenhouses, water can also be used to produce fuel. But that's not all. The lunar samples brought back from Chang'e 5 have revealed another secret. With helium-3 into the new energy age. In addition to water, Chang'e 5 also has a completely new mineral that so far has only been found on the moon. The crystal, which was formed about 1.2 billion years ago during a period of volcanic activity on the moon, contains an extraordinary ingredient, helium-3. Helium-3 is a substance that could solve our energy problem immediately and even stop climate catastrophe. The isotope is extremely fusion-friendly and could finally bring mankind the possibility of generating energy from atomic fusion. Atomic fusion produces far more energy than splitting atoms and leaves no radiating waste. So, fusion reactors would be far more effective and environmentally friendly at the same time. So far, however, we do not use this energy source because helium-3 is so rare on Earth that it would not be worthwhile to start up a fusion reactor just to consume this minimal deposit. With the likely gigantic deposit of helium-3 on the moon, that could change in the near future. So far, there is still a major challenge in harnessing these resources. Transporting the rock from the moon to the Earth is an effort whose costs are difficult to calculate at the moment. However, it is already certain that the loading capacity of a space shuttle alone could supply the U.S. with energy for a year. But no man has been on the moon for almost 50 years, and even the Apollo astronauts visited the moon for only a few hours. We need to develop the moon now if we don't want to take away this change to a clean energy age. The prospect of being able to mine helium-3 on the moon continues to drive NASA and Chinese space efforts in a positive sense. Major energy companies on Earth have already indicated interest and could provide financial support for future missions. As early as 2024, the Chang'e mission will collect samples from the dark side of the moon for the first time. Is there danger on the moon? Before humans can dream of developing the moon economically, we need to learn more about this celestial body. We do not yet know what we might trigger there with our activities or what hitherto underestimated dangers lurk on the moon. Chang'e 4, China's first lunar rover, landed on the moon on January 3, 2019, and made another startling discovery at its landing site on the far side of the moon from Earth, an unusual gel-like substance. This discovery happened more by accident as the rover was preparing to take its daily rest break to avoid the heat of the midday sun. As the camera is lowered, a scientist noticed something odd in one of the images, a gel-like substance with a strange color. Closer examination with the rover's infrared spectrometers failed to yield any known data about the substance's composition, which in plain English means it is completely unknown. Experts have since puzzled over whether it is a remnant of a violent collision with a meteorite or a previously unknown form of matter. Unfortunately, China has not yet released any images of this substance. With the rest of the scientific world, the Chinese space travelers shared only the basic information about the unusual find. This, of course, has also fueled rumors surrounding a possible hint of extraterrestrial life on the far side of the moon. For a long time, there have been suspicions that there are aliens on the side of the moon that we can never see from Earth. Mahesh Anand, a planetary scientist at the Open University in the United Kingdom, on the other hand, believes that the mysterious find is some kind of liquid glass. An atomic bomb test in New Mexico produced a glassy mineral called trinitite, which resembles the descriptions given by Chinese scientists. Anand added to his report, however, 
that given the sparse information about the substance, it's difficult to definitively confirm what it is made of. Still, we don't know for sure what it is, and we know very little overall about what else is hiding on the moon. Chang'e 4's find is not the first discovery of a strangely colored substance on the moon. The majority of the lunar surface is covered with fine gray dust known as lunar regolith. But back in 1972, astronauts Harrison Schmidt and Jean Cernan stumbled upon strange orange dust right next to their landing site during the Apollo 17 mission. At the time, scientists concluded that the colorful dust was most likely created in the wake of a volcanic explosion about 3.64 billion years ago. Probes have now scanned and repeatedly measured the entire moon, and thanks to the latest technologies, even we can zoom in on almost every corner of the moon. But the surface may still hold surprises that no one expects now. Similarly, if humans begin to dig into the surface of the moon, as would be the case with professional mining on the moon, for example. What do you think? Is the moon a safe celestial body? Or what nasty surprises might be waiting there for future space travelers and lunar settlers?